You already want to exercise more, spend less, and quit buying scratch-offs, but those are boring. Let's use this as a way to increase our lethality in the American culture war, why don't we? John Doyle in. Heck off, Kami. Greetings and welcome to Heck Off Kami. Also, welcome to 2019, where in case you weren't aware, men are women, women are men, God is racist, racial segregation is not, and pedophilia is a sexuality too, bigot. Stop your intolerance, leave your closed mind in 2018. There's no statue of limitations on pedophilia. You still deserve to be hanged, drawn, and quartered. It makes much more fiscal sense than life imprisonment, and I think it would send a greater message personally. Um, I've got five New Year's resolutions for you conservatives because I apparently think that I'm qualified to tell you how to live your life, but in all seriousness, I think that these are good things that every conservative should be doing from here on out um, if they're not already. So number one, stop apologizing. Stop doing that. They take this straight from their handbook, Saul Alinsky's Rules for Radicals, that ridicule is the most potent weapon. It's because of this that they don't argue, they just insult. That and because they can't win on policy, so then they have to win on morality. You don't support welfare? You're racist. You don't support abortion? You're sexist. And conservatives will always respond with, well, no, I'm, I'm not sexist. I'm not, hey, stop that. That's not the correct response. The correct response to those accusations is in two parts. Part one, the only reason that you're accusing me of such awful bigotry is because you yearn for the intellectual capacity to argue with reason and influence people, but you can't. So instead, you just insult. And part two, this conversation is over. Go f*** yourself. Some people might choose to leave out part two, and that's fine, but the point is that you end the conversation there. And no, it isn't contradictory to say, hey, don't let them get away with insulting you and then proceed to insult them. The point is they're insulting you in order to disprove your political opinions. They've milked these insults so much, people are forgetting how offended they should actually be when someone accuses them of racism or sexism, but now they accuse so many things that clearly are not racist of racism. It's totally lost its meaning. The moment they insult you like this, the conversation is over. They have proven themselves to be incoherent and therefore a waste of your time. Then go ahead and tell them to go fuck themselves independently of the political discussion that has just ended because you should be pretty pissed off that they just accused you of hating an entire race of people because you don't like that the father is being replaced with the state as a result of the expansion of welfare policies to use a conversation I once had as an example. Uh, the second you go on defense, you lose. So don't even legitimize the insult by responding to it. It's BS. Everyone knows it's BS, so treat it as such. Senator, when did you stop beating your wife is the question that's used, I think. Uh, number two, stop staying quiet. Stop being intimidated. Stop keeping your head down whenever someone brings up President Trump or any issue like that. Stop allowing the voice of leftism to dominate the cultural narrative. They like to pretend that their worldview is both the dominant and correct worldview, and then there's just a few old Republicans left, and that's not true. That's why we have the silent majority. Don't be the silent majority. Be the majority. Speak up. Every time you let a leftist get away with saying something stupid, something that you know is wrong, bear in mind that someone might have heard that and think, oh yeah, I've heard that before. Yeah, that makes sense. That's how people get indoctrinated. They're told these things by their professors, their celebrities. These ideas are never challenged, so they just believe them because they want to conform, and then they'll have believed it for so long they'll be hesitant to ever change their mind because they perceive it as innate truth. We don't have the luxury anymore of just waiting for people to get it. That's how we let them take over Hollywood. That's how we let them take over academia. If you care about this country, its traditions, its culture, you're obligated to fight for them, so speak up. It's as simple as saying, hey, uh, but that isn't true, and then explaining why, but you hesitate to do that because of number three. Number three, which is don't be afraid to lose people. Don't be afraid to lose friends. Don't be afraid to lose family members. When I started being outspokenly conservative, I quite literally made myself the most hated person in my school in less than one year. And all I did was tweet things and speak up in class. That's basically it. And then I was a racist. I was a Nazi. One time I got called down to the front office because someone had submitted an, on, um, an anonymous online report that I was starting a hate group at my school. And uh, I'll tell you what, after I made that transition, I never felt more empowered in anything because I know that I might not have as many friends as I used to, but I have integrity. And that's the problem. They don't have integrity. That's why high school friendships don't last. You're afraid to deviate from the social norm. So no one really knows who you are, what makes you different, what makes you unique. And as a result, no one really cares about you. You're just like everybody else. So you're basically very replaceable. It's not possible to care about someone who doesn't have integrity because if you care about someone with no integrity, then the version of them that you care about isn't actually who they are. Therefore, you don't actually care about them. You care about the version of themselves that they have, uh, that they have allowed themselves to show you. And uh, if you're afraid to lose friends or family members over political differences, ask yourself, how close were you actually? Is someone who would put your relationship on the line over a political dispute really worth keeping in your life? That's the thing though, because every argument with them is reduced to morality. It isn't in their view that you just disagree on policy. It's that you've proven yourself to be morally reprehensible. And because of that, they probably want you to be hanged, drawn, and quartered. 
Um, and you might be thinking, well, I don't want to start any problems. And You know what you're doing? You're disguising your own vices as virtues to reduce your own anxiety. You're telling yourself that your cowardice is courageous since you'll take the high road and you don't want to start any problems. Don't do that. If they're spewing opinions, you're entitled to chime in. And if that's a problem, then it's their problem. It's not yours. Don't let them use an emotional leverage. You deserve people in your life that care about you for who you are. Don't let them do that to you. Number four, read. Give it a chapter every day, that's it, or more, but try at least one chapter. And yes, you do have the time, and if you don't make time, watch less TV, spend less time on your phone or the internet. Set a time every day, you tell yourself, okay, this is when I read. This is so important, there are so many great things to learn out there. There are more books to read than you'll ever have time to read, so you'll be able to find enough to read easily, stuff that you're interested into. And you'll notice almost immediately that you'll be able to articulate yourself better. Also, read books that challenge your beliefs, too. You'll arguably learn more that way. Read just as much Marx as you do Friedman, you know, but even though Friedman wrote more, but you get the point. Uh, there's no way that you can argue that educating yourself is bad so just do it it's actually pretty fun last one um spread your message let your voice be heard post about it on social media post about it on political forums there's a link to one in my description uh for every video i post it's really great i encourage this uh talking with people people you agree with people you disagree with it's of utmost importance so do it retweet that meme comment on that post write that op-ed maybe who even knows but make your voice heard you should do it that's basically it and i would say that hey if you can just do one of these, it'll be an improvement. No, you should do all of these things, every single one, and you will be a powerhouse, a force to be reckoned with. I believe in you. They really aren't that hard, so just do them, and then together we will all be better equipped to tread through the increasingly toxic American political atmosphere in 2019 and the years following. Hey guys, if you like this video, click my face down there to subscribe, leave me a comment and a thumbs up, let me know how I'm doing, and uh, share this video with a conservative friend of yours who you think might benefit from these resolutions. Thank you so much for watching, and may God bless America.